Hey guys, welcome to another Essential tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can disintegrate this room in 3ds Max using Tyflow and V-Ray. So to get started here, I got this asset off of the CG Trader Marketplace. And what I did is I just added all these furniture items that I wanted to have fly off into the ceiling into their own custom selection set. And what that's going to allow us to do is to easily select these later on in our Tyflow simulation. You don't have to do this, you can individually pick them one by one, but I just found it saves me time. So to get started, you could have manually animated each one of these pieces going up into the ceiling, just adding a few uh, keyframes, um, but that'd be slow and it's not very procedural. So let's undo that. And I'm gonna show you how we can automate this process using Tyflow. So let's create our first Tyflow simulation, drag it into the scene and go to open editor. And then I'm gonna drag in a birth objects operator, minimize this down so you can see it. And let's go ahead and select that custom selection I mentioned and go add selected. So now they're all added into our Typhlo sim. Let's make sure to hide after adding and to inherit from object under the material tab. So all our materials are brought into Typhlo. So the next step is we're gonna need to have some kind of collider trigger each of these animations um, so that the items fly into the ceiling. I'm gonna use just a box object and I'm just gonna animate it from right to left with just two keyframes. And then one important thing you want to do is you want to make sure to right click, go object properties and make it display as box and not renderable. Otherwise, when you go to render this out, you're going to see that geometry there, which you don't want. So let's go back to our Typhlo editor and let's add in a surface test operator. I'm going to go uh, click pick, tap H on your keyboard. That'll bring up the selection menu and let's select that box. I'm then going to select volume inside under the surface test mode so that as each uh, furniture item goes inside that box item, it's going to pass this next event here. In that next event, I'm going to have a force operator. And let's just go and quickly add a mesh operator here so that it's renderable. Otherwise, this won't be visible uh, when you go to render in V-Ray. Under the force, let's add point 0.2 uh, pointing up in the Z direction. Now, as I scrub through my timeline, you're going to see that as it goes inside the volume of the box, each of these items is going to fly up in the Z direction uh, with a force of point 0.2. So we can also add a spin operator so that rather than just going directly up, they're going to have a bit of spin to them. And let's lower the spin rate to something like 20 so that it's not too extreme and just has a nice bit of um, rotational offset as they're flying into the ceiling. And so that's a really nice quick procedural way to be able to animate those objects. Let's go ahead and create a tie preview so that we can see what that looks like. This just means that we can quickly remove, add new items, um, reposition them in our scene and we don't have to worry about our keyframes getting messed up here. So on to the next step, we're going to want to create another tie flow simulation and this time it's going to be for our leaf objects. Now these leaves and stems are all one item, so we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to still need a trigger item, so let's go ahead and create our, our tie flow simulation. Let's open it up and let's create our uh, Earth Objects Operator here and add each one of these items into our Typhlo simulation. I missed the stem here, let's add that in. And let's go ahead and make sure to split object elements so that each one of those leaves and each one of those stems are brought in individually in our simulation. Again, you want to inherit from object under the materials tab so all the materials are brought in. Now, as I mentioned, we're still going to need a trigger object of some sort. So again, I'm going to use our handy old box. I'm going to align it here, and I'm just going to animate it going from top to bottom. Again, we only need two keyframes. So let's move it from here down using the auto key function so that those keyframes are automatically created. And once again, we're going to have to disable the renderable tab and make sure that it's displayed as a box. And let's go ahead and add that back into our Typhlo simulation. So let's create another sur uh, surface test operator and let's pick that second box that we just created. And once again, once it goes inside the volume of that box, we want it to have some kind of force applied to it. So I'm going to again send it in the Z direction with a point to strength and I could add a bit of Perlin noise as well. And then I'm also going to want to add a spin. This time I'm going to leave the spin to default. And lastly, we're going to need a mesh operator there so that our leaves are renderable within V-Ray. Make sure not to forget in the surface test, you want to set the uh, style to volume inside. So as these leaves go inside that box, they're going to pass one of the second events 
and they're going to get a bit of force and spin added to them so that they fly away. Cool. So uh, one other thing here, I want to add this planter in it as well so that that entire item flies away. That's what's nice about tie flow is it's pretty procedural that you can quickly modify your animations based on these kind of rules. So what's next here? Well, let's go ahead and create another tie flow simulation and I'm gonna show you how we can blast away this wall. I have this wall item separated into the left section and the right section already. Um, and that's just gonna allow us to have it break apart and uh, move away in different directions. So let's create some kind of other colliding objects. In this case, I'm going to use a sphere. And I'm going to add a few keyframes here so that as a sphere intersects with the wall, it's going to then rapidly expand its radius. I'm then going to also use a volume inside um, for this so that as it uh, intersects with this item, it's going to pass each one of these fractured pieces into the next event. So let's create another birth object and I'm going to make sure that our wall and our baseboard is included in there. And you're going to see that we're going to need a Voronoi fracture. And this is just so that we can divide our wall into a bunch of tiny pieces. And as before, we're going to need another surface test operator. Let's select that sphere um, that we just created before. Drag it into the second event for the force. And this time I'm going to have it move in the negative X direction. With again, a strength of 0.2. And maybe a tiny bit of noise. I'm also going to need another mesh operator for this as well. Holding shift, you can drag it so it copies into the next event. And once again, we're going to set it to volume inside. So now as these Voronoi particles uh, intersect with that sphere, they're going to shoot into the next event. So I forgot to make this not renderable and display this box. So let's do that now. And as I scrub through the timeline, you're now going to see that these pieces fracture. Now, why are they so uh, large? Well, we're going to need to increase the density of these uh, points here. So let's increase the points from something like 10 to 600. And now we're going to get a ton of these little tiny pieces. And as it goes through this sphere, it's going to trigger and then go to the next event. And that looks like it's working correctly. So what we can also do is we can add a little bit more detail. We can copy that Voronoi fracture over. And I just want to increase the points to something like 150 because it's going to be dividing those meshes one more time. So you're going to have these large chunks as they go into second of the event. They're going to get uh, Voronoi fractured again. And then uh, it's just going to add a bit of smaller debris uh, details that, that should look pretty good. So let's duplicate this. And I'm going to do it again on the second side for this wall. So we're going to need another uh, object as well. So let's create another sphere. And doing the same thing, we're going to move it into position and then rapidly increase the radius. I'm going to rename it here. And all I have to do is hit Control-V on our previous tie flow simulation in order to duplicate it over. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to disable it. And I just want to change out some of the uh, objects here so that it works correctly. So rather than using the left wall, let's put in all the pieces of our right wall into the birth objects uh, node. And then under the Voronoi fracture, because it is pretty high poly, I want to lower down the points. Otherwise, it's going to take really long to sim here. Uh, we're going to need to change that surface test operator to the different collider. And again, for the second Voronoi fracture, I'm going to lower the points to something like 10. Uh, in the force, you want to make sure that the force points away in the Y direction so that it moves towards that other building in the background. And I think we can go now and re-enable this, and uh, it should work as expected. Sweet. So lastly, I'm going to have one more tie flow simulation, and this time we're going to do it for the floor. Again, we're going to need to have some kind of other trigger colliding object. So let's create another sphere here. And I'm just going to animate up the radius this time for this one. Let's go ahead and rename it so we can easily find it. And let's create one more tie flow simulation. So going back to our camera view, I'm going to select that tie flow sim from before. And I'm just going to duplicate it to save a bit of time. Now for this one, uh, again, we're going to want to disable it just so it's faster and doesn't keep updating on us. Um, let's replace all of our birth objects once more. We're going to replace it with the floor. Replace out the uh, colliding object here and under the Voronoi fracture, we can leave that the same. And the force, we want to have it shoot downwards this time. So we're going to put it negative one in the X direction. Uh, making sure we set it to not renderable so it's not visible and that works pretty well. 
Sorry, we're gonna do the rug. So this is actually gonna be one last type of simulation. So let's show you how we can do cloth binding. Uh, so I'm going to birth that rug piece in here. And then I'm going to inherit from objects and I'm gonna add a cloth bind operator. So let's select that surface test uh, colliding object. And let's add our cloth bind so that our object behaves like cloth. And then it's gonna be the same steps as before. We're gonna add in a force. Connect that two together. Make sure that it's shooting downwards in the negative Z direction. Add in a mesh so that it's renderable. Again, all the same steps as these other type of simulations. So now as I play through it, you can see that this rug behaves like cloth and flies downwards. So if I enable that original colliding object and make it not display as a box, you can see that as the object intersects with this rug, that it starts to enable that cloth binding and it starts to fall down. So that's pretty much all I had to do in order to get this scene working. Uh, I then cached it out and just rendered it through V-Ray, so pretty simple. Um, you don't have to cache it out, but it just helps keep things snappy when you're working in Tyflow. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something new, and I will see you next time.